Lynn is five years younger than Tom. In six years, Lynn will be three-fourths as old. How old is Lynn now? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then, of course, I'll go through exactly how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is the problem. And when you're dealing with math, where problems always use the rule of three. The rule of three, this is my rule, but basically I've learned this rule the hard way through many decades of doing math and teaching math. And that is the following. Before you start doing anything, read a problem at least three times. Soak in the information and really make sure you understand the question because uh, in a math problem, okay, especially a math word problem, there's a lot of different information. You kind of really have to give your brain a little bit of time to kind of kick in, simulate all the uh, information, and to really think about different strategies uh, and methods you can take to go forward. Okay, so you just don't want to start doing stuff because that's uh, if you um, you know are not patient with the process, you just start writing things down. You'll probably have to end up backtracking and then start again. Okay. So again, uh, the problem is uh, we have Lynn and Tom, and we have two um, age uh, er, or two ages that we are concerned with, right? Their current age and then their age in six years from now. So we need some sort of model to figure this out, and it's kind of hard to visualize this model. So um, in algebra. There is different types of um, algebra problems, and if you're going to take an algebra course, or if you're taking an algebra course, there is the kind of classic algebra problems that you need to know how to do. It's kind of like uh, classic music, right? So maybe that's like 60s music or 50s music. You got the oldies, these songs that play over and over again that are just fantastic, and you just hear them. Uh, same thing in algebra. So let me just tell you real quick uh, the different type of problems are you definitely need to know how to do. Uh, one is age problems, which, of course, we're doing one right now. Another type, and these aren't all the types, is uh, rate, uh, time, distance, motion type of problems. Again, very classic type of problems. Uh, mixture problems, that's another uh, very uh, classic type of algebra problem. And there's some others as well. But uh, what I'm kind of saying here is that once you understand how to solve one of these types of problems, it will give you a good idea what to do in other versions of those type of problems. Now, they're not, they're not always going to be exactly the same. But again, you know, uh, if you are studying mathematics and you want to get better at math, the way to do that is to do a lot of problems. And of course, you need to have the skills, the requisite uh, skills in order to do these problems. But experience definitely counts here. OK, so how can we model the situation? Well, let's use a variable because we have some unknown values here, right? We don't know what Lynn's age is, and we don't know what Tom's age is. So, uh, you know, you could say, well, maybe I need two variables like X or Y, or maybe I could just get away with one variable. Now, uh, here is the thing, especially for those of you that are in first year algebra. You're going to have different types of uh, math word problems, some involving one variable, okay, one variable, one variable, excuse me. Uh, those are like linear equation type of problems, and these are the simplest type of problems. Now, sometimes students will jump into uh, a situation where they'll look at a problem like this and be like, okay, I don't know Lynn's age or Tom's age, so I'll want to let both of those unknown values be different variables. you got to be careful here because what you're going to have is a system, a two-variable linear system, and you don't want to overcomplicate this um, uh, problem, okay? And again, the best way to kind of figure out what's going on here is just through experience. So always try to get away with using one variable to represent what's going on in a problem. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that in this problem. And we need to um, have this, have a variable. And while I use the variable X, represent someone's age. It could be Tom's age or Lynn's age. It could be uh, Tom's age now, or maybe it could be Lynn's age now, or it could be Tom's age six years in the future, 
uh, or it could be lens age at six years in the future. It doesn't make a difference. Well, let me take that back. It kind of does. Uh, what you want to do is try to pick the simplest age or uh, to kind of construct a table of values. Now, I kind of uh, that wasn't too graceful the way I just said that, but again, you know, with experience, you'll get better at this. Now, one way you can kind of figure this out is to create a, um, a table, right? So let me go ahead and just create this table, and then we'll talk about um, how, can we get, how we can decide what the variable should be. So we have two um, ages. This is the best way to do age problems. You have uh, the current age, okay, or and then you have some other age in the future. Now, this could be like next year, six years um, you know, ago, 10 years ago, 10 years in the future. It doesn't make a difference. You have two different time frames. Now, in this case, we're dealing with two different people. If you had three different people, you would have uh, three columns, okay? All right, now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let uh, X represent Tom's age right now, okay? So if X equals Tom's age right now, X minus five is Lynn's age right now, okay? So we're kind of going across this row, okay? This is our ages right now. So let's go back to the problem, and this is where we're gonna have to read, reread the problem, make sure we got things right. So Lynn is five years younger than Tom. Okay, we're talking present tense. Lynn is five years younger than Tom. So if Tom is X, then uh, X years old, then Lynn is five years younger. So her uh, age is X minus five, okay? All right, so this is really kind of the main setup. If we can get their cur uh, the current ages down in some sort of algebraic expression, then six years uh, from now, it should be pretty easy uh, to figure this out because in six years, uh, their age is going to be plus six. They're going to get, they're going to have six more years on top of their current age. So Tom is going to go from X to X plus six, and Lynn is going to have uh, X minus five, X minus five, which is her current age right now. We're going to add six onto her, uh, her age. That's how old she's going to be in six years from now. Okay, so again, how you assign a variable. You could solve this problem um, having variables, uh, you know, have uh, Lynn, um, let X uh, equal uh, Lynn's age, and then we would have to just kind of reverse things around. But again, you know, experience will um, uh, tell. And if you set up a table and you use the kind of a different relationship here, um, in other words, you let X equals uh, Lynn's age six years from now, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but this is the way I'm going to set this up. Okay, but the main idea here is it could set up a table, okay? When you're dealing um, with algebra age word problems, uh, having a table of values is extremely uh, beneficial because we can see what's going on, okay? We know their ages uh, now and in six years from now, but we don't know their exact age, but we do know their, age, their ages represented with algebraic expressions. Okay, so what do we do? What do we need to do next? Well, we need to construct an equation because then having all, having all these variables isn't going to do us any good unless we can build an equation to solve for these variables. But notice here, I'm only using one variable. Okay, in other words, I don't have Tom's age as X and Lynn's age as Y. Now, there's definitely going to be a time and place where you're going to have to solve two variable uh, uh, linear equations. So if you have two variables, X and Y, you're going to need another, uh, two equations with uh, uh, to solve uh, a, an equation or to solve for two variables. Let me do, I'm all over the place today. If I have X and Y, okay, and I'm trying to solve for two different variables, I'm going to need to have two different equations that involve these uh, variables, okay? This is a system of linear equations and there's definitely these type of word problems in algebra. So you gotta be careful here and hopefully, you know, you understand my point. Okay, so let's go ahead, go ahead and proceed to the next step, which is figuring out how to build an equation. So to build an equation, we're gonna have to take a look at the rest of the problem and see uh, where, you know, what piece of information can help us, you know, establish a relationship between their ages, okay? And this part of the problem is what I'm talking about. So in six years, Lynn will be, okay, three-fourths as old as Tom. So in six years, Lynn's age will be equal to three-fourths uh, that of Tom's age. So you have to kind of interpret this sentence, but basically, uh, mathematically, it's this. So in six years from now, Lynn 
Lynn's age is going to be three-fourths of Tom's age, whatever his uh, age is going to be six years from now. Okay, so this is the relationship we need, and um, this is the relationship we need because it's an equal sign here. It's an equivalency, uh, so we can build ourselves a nice equation. Okay, so what's Lynn's age six years from now? Well, uh, her age six years from now is going to be this, and this is Tom's age six years from now. So what we could do is build ourselves a nice equation. Okay, so in six years from now, this is Lynn's age, x minus 5 plus 6. And Tom's age six years from now is x plus 6, but Lynn's age is going to be three-fourths of Tom's age in six years. All right, so if you are a little bit confused, you may want to just kind of maybe rewind all this. I know I'm kind of stumbling and bumbling here a bit, but hopefully, you know, the math kind of speaks for itself. So you got to be able to understand, you know, this part of the problem. This is the most important part, in my opinion, is modeling uh, the situation and coming up with an equation. All right, so at this point, uh, hopefully you have the algebra skills to solve this equation for x. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you. Well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description. But they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. All right, so uh, x minus 5 plus 6 is equal to 3 fourths times x plus 6. So, of course, we're super excited here because we have a fraction. And a lot of uh, students are like, I don't like fractions. Well, you have to be really comfortable with uh, working with fractions. So the first thing we want to do is apply the distributive property right here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take this 3 fourths times x and times 6. So 3 fourths times x is uh, 3 fourths x plus 3 fourths times the 6 is going to be 18 over 4. Now, of course, I can simplify and reduce this, but I'm not going to do this just yet. But let's go ahead and clean up this left-hand side. So I have x minus 5 plus 6 minus 5 plus 6. Last time I checked is 1. Okay, so here is our equation at this point. x plus 1 is equal to 3 fourths x plus 18 over 4. Now, why am I not going to reduce this fraction to 9 halves? Okay, well, because I can see that the lowest common denominator uh, here is 4. Okay, now this is 1, this is 1. Now, the LCD out of all, everything, all the terms in this equation is 4. And I just want to get rid of all the fractions right now. So the best way to deal with equations with fractions, generally speaking, is to multiply the entire equation by the LCD. That will simply clear away all the fractions. So let's multiply the entire equation here by 4, which is the LCD. So this is going to be 4, four times x uh, times 4 times 1. Let me show you the work right here. And then we're going to multiply 4 times 3 fourths x and 4 times 18 over 4. Okay, so let's just take this one at a time. So 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 3 fourths, the uh, 4s cross cancel. And you're left with 3x. And then 4 times 18 over 4, the 4s cross cancel. Again, you're left with 18. All right, so here is our equation. And now look at this. This is super easy uh, to solve. Uh, now, I didn't show these steps, but I'll show them right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll subtract, we'll move our variables to the left-hand side. So we'll uh, subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. And when we do that, we get uh, 4x minus 3x, which of course is 1x. And then we're going to go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. And when we, when do, and when we do that, the 4s are going to go away. Of course, uh, 3x's went away over here. And then we have 18 minus 4, which is 14. Okay, so x is equal to 14. So that is the answer. Now, don't just, you know... 
rush. And this is another mistake that a lot of students do. They're like, I am so uh, great at math and algebra. I got the answer. I wasn't lost. X is equal to 14. I'm done. Here you go, uh, teacher, because uh, I want to kind of move on and see what uh, text messages I have. Don't do not do that, okay? Did you answer the question? No, we haven't answered the question yet. We just know that X is equal to 14. So you have to always circle back when you are done with, uh, you know, working a math word problem or any problem in math, always stop and pause and ask yourself, did you answer the question? We have not answered the question. What is the question? The question is, uh, how old is Lynn right now? Well, what does X represent? Remember, X represents Tom's age uh, right now, right? So we let X equal uh, Tom's age currently. So X is equal to 14. That's what we saw for. So Tom is 14. What we want is Lynn's age right now. So Lynn's age right now is X minus five because Lynn is five years younger than Tom. So pretty straightforward stuff. Lynn's age right now is X minus five. If X is equal to 14, then we're, we're gonna go to replace this X with 14, 14 minus five is nine. Okay, so again, uh, you know, very classic type of algebra word problem. Now, the, all these problems are not going to be exactly the same, but they're going to be very similar. So the only way you're going to get better at algebra and word problems, again, is practice, practice, practice. Now, if you need help with algebra word problems, I have a ton of algebra word problems and all stuff algebra on my YouTube channel. So you can check that stuff out. But if you need full course instruction, um, and you definitely need that if you don't have your, you know, kind of uh, main uh, algebra skills down, check out my full courses. I would definitely recommend my Algebra 1 course or maybe my Pre-Algebra course if you're in Pre-Algebra. You can find links to those in the description below. If you happen to be in Algebra 2 or even Pre-Calculus, you'll find those courses as well. And maybe you're not even a math student. Well, if you're, if you're not a math student, you just want to learn some math, check out my Math Skills Rebuild a Course. I'm going to teach you everything that you forgot many, many years ago to include basic math, algebra, geometry, even some trigonometry, and some probability and statistics. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.